Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming, and uh, thank you to the librarians for uh, running programs on job search. It's always great to be able to share this beyond um, my own organization. So this is uh, this is wonderful. Um, today we're going to be talking about informational interviews, and I just want to tell you that I always uh, like to mention that I consider informational interviewing to be the gold standard of job search. Uh, there's no way that you can get closer to an organization other than them inviting you for a job interview, uh, which they're in control of, but you are in control of trying to put together informational interviewing. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. And I want to put you all into gallery mode so I can actually you know, I know most of you are keeping your cameras off because you're very shy. <laughs> um, or you're still still not dressed, whatever the reason. <laughs> um, I still want to see who's here. So I'll be doing that and I will be showing you my slides at the same time. Um, I'm going to put this into presentation mode so that you'll be able to see a large slide. Um, so just by way of, uh, of introductions, uh, this is me. I'm, I'm David Robbins. I'm the senior instructor for the Job Search Accelerator Program at JVS. JVS, it, we just celebrated our 50th anniversary uh, in the Bay Area. Uh, we help people build in-demand job skills. We test uh, with employers what are employers looking for, and then we train people in those skills. And we make connections and try to build careers in the Bay Area. Um, I have to update this slide. We just celebrated our 50th uh, anniversary at SF Jazz. That's a one year, uh, every year annual fundraiser um, where we talk about what we do and we invite many corporate partners to come to that. Uh, alumni, people who have graduated our programs, come to that. Um, what, what do we specialize in? We, we have training expertise. We bring in trainers. If we don't have the expertise ourselves, we bring in trainers to teach people in, in healthcare, in technology, in the in the business, the building trades. Um, we always look to serve a diverse population. So we're always looking to make sure that we're working in, a, in an environment of diversity, um, equity, and inclusion. Um, and in order to help our graduating clients, we make sure that we have partnerships with hundreds of employers. So we're always working with employers to let them know, hey, here are the people we're training. Um, and they'll sometimes give our graduates first crack at jobs that are coming up. Um, these are some of the offerings. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you will get this slide set after the presentation and you'll be able to go through this slide by slide and anything that I kind of uh, glossing over because the information is here on the slide for you. And there's a link at the bottom of the slide if you wanted to get more information from our website. This is the program, uh, Job Search Accelerator. This is the program that I work with. Um, we do a two week, kind of an intensive program. It's two weeks and all we cover, we don't do anything about hard skills. We talk about job search skills and we work just on resume, cover letter, uh, interviewing, um, how to put together a store stories. All of the details of what we call the seven essentials of job search uh, are covered in a two week period. And then people graduate and then continue to get support from JVS for one year while they're looking for, for work. Most people don't have to be there for a year, but it depends on what people are looking for and what the availability is out in the in the marketplace. But this is why you're here. That was the commercial. Commercial's over. <laughs> now we can get into this is the content. And again, uh, as I mentioned, I really think that informational interviewing is is so important. And I'll I'll tell you about my experience with informational interview, um, including the fact that my I've been I've been working at JVS for 13 years. I got my job through an informational interview. Um, so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that, and I'll, I'll give you a couple of experiences that I've had, and I'll share one of my clients' experiences also. 
we want to talk about what informational interviewing is, why you should be considering it. Actually, I shouldn't, you shouldn't even consider it. You should definitely learn to do informational interviews and how to do it. So I'll give you a little bit of each piece. So the first thing is, what is an informational interview? It is a prearranged conversation, meaning that um, you have to set it up in advance. It's not just you bump into somebody and start talking to them. It's where you're going to ask someone for some of their time. And, and in asking them for their time, you're going to then be able to prepare to actually interview them to get information about what you're looking for. Um, so it might be in a company that you're interested in, you talk to somebody who works in that company and learn more about the company and how it is to work in that company, or it could be in an industry. Um, it's part of networking, uh, but it's also part of research. So it, the reason, again, I consider it to be gold standard is that it covers two of the seven essentials, the research essential and the interviewing essential. So it does both of those, well, excuse me, um, the networking essential. So um, just a quote that I, that I found from an uh, author of a book called Stand Out Networking. Um, and it's so true. You may think you know all about a particular position. Speak to somebody who does that work and you have the best opportunity to test your assumptions. So I think that's something that's going to really help. Um, I actually, when I, I worked for Hewlett Packard for uh, 16 years, and they had a major uh, basically layoff, uh, 15,000 people were let go. Um, kind of something that tech is going through now. Tech goes through these things periodically. And I was one of 15,000 that got let go. And then I was looking around, what should I be doing next? And I used informational interviewing to help me figure out what I might want to do next and what I definitely don't want to do next. And that's where informational interviewing can really help. It'll save you a lot of time if you put in uh, a 15 minute conversation with somebody to realize, ooh, I don't want to do that. And then you don't ever have to look at those uh, job postings again. So I, I think that this is real important. This is what an information interview is, but if this is what it is not. It is not a job interview. If you think that you're going to talk to somebody in a particular role and ask them about jobs that are available, that's the time when they realize, oh, you don't want to talk to me about information. If you're interested in jobs, go down the hall to the HR department and fill out the application. Different role. People uh, don't want to be saddled with finding you a job, particularly these are people you may not know. They're not good friends. So they don't really want to be put in the position of finding you a job, but people love to give advice. People love to share information. And people love to help people get a leg up. So it's not a job interview, but it's also not just to get together with your friends. I'm having coffee with a friend, that's an informational interview. It's not. Um, if you say, yeah, but I'm asking them about the work that they do. Well, then formalize that and turn it into an informational interview. Um, it is not a place to ask for a job. Can't be strong enough on that. Um, it's also not an activity to walk into unprepared because you have an opportunity here to get an ally. And that's wonderful because we all need that in our job search. We need allies out there, people who can speak for us and speak on our behalf. So remember what it's not, not a job interview, not a casual get together, not a place to ask for a job and not a place to walk in unprepared. So that's the what it is and what it is not. But why should we bother? David, give me the why. Okay, I will. Here's the why. <laughs> Why of informational interviews? This is where you get firsthand information about the realities of what you're looking for. Um, this is a place where you can test out certain premises. This is where you can also find out about career paths that you didn't know existed and then go out and get information about them. You can get tips and insider information about how to prepare for this position. So uh, 
I'll give you some uh, of the how to. This is just the why. And, and these are the things that you get as benefits of an informational interview. This is where you can also learn what it's like to work at a specific organization. So if I think I want to work for ABC company, you can prepare, you can look at the job boards, you can, you, you can send your resume and cover letters in, you can really get ready uh, to get that job in this company. But do you really know whether this is a good company to work for? Be nice to find that out while you're applying. I, I'm not saying don't apply. But while you're applying, try to find somebody in that company to speak with to find out what's it like to work here. What's your day like? Um, what kind of projects do people work on? What's the growth potential here? Is there a professional development um, model that people are using inside this company? These are all the questions that very hard to find in a website, very hard to find um, when you're doing all the research, which you definitely should do. But while you're applying to this company, try to get more information to decide, wait a second, this is not the company for me, or oh, this is a great company. Not only are you making that decision, you're getting information so that if you do get invited for an interview, you now have some more information about the company that you can share at an interview. So that's the, the one of the whys. Another is, as you're meeting somebody, you're starting to um, build a professional relationship with that person. So that's the networking piece. You could actually build a long-term relationship with somebody, even if you don't ever apply to that company, but just possibly keep in touch with that person or they keep in touch with you. That you connect on LinkedIn, for example, and when they post something, you just make a comment about it. Or when you post something, you might find, oh, they're making a comment about something I just posted. But that's where you're starting to build that relationship. Or you find a great article and send it to that person that you just met. They're already in the workforce. Great opportunity to build that relationship and try to build an ally inside that organization. So there are a couple of key words in this last bullet. One, network. Expanding your network is the way you're going to be more successful in your job search. Uh, we have a cheer in my job search accelerator program. Um, I say networking, networking, and the rest of the group yells networking because that's what it's about. Most people will get their job from somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. So in an informational interview, not only are you getting information for you to make certain decisions, not only are you getting information to do better on an interview, you're also possibly gaining an ally and building out your network. That person can also, in the, la the last part of this last bullet, this person can also refer you to an open position that hasn't been posted yet. So, um, so let me let me give you a, a a quick story about that. Um, after I was let go from from Hewlett Packard, um, I was trying to figure out what am I going to do next. And I was working with um, a workforce development organization, so I was a client, learning more about resumes. Again, sixteen years working in, in corporate life, I was away from writing resumes. So I was learning how to write a resume and interview. And I was learning all those things. Um, and I started learning about informational interviewing. And I said, you know, um, I should check out some other things. Now, I happened to run across um, a mock jury opportunity where they were paying people. It was a marketing firm. And they were paying people to come and spend the day as a mock jury. And I went there. and could use the money. I was now unemployed, so it was great. Uh, and the person who facilitated that group, uh, I really was impressed with his skills. I said, wow, that was that's really interesting. He brought in, brought in the lawyer. He brought in the second lawyer. It was just as if we were a jury panel. And then we broke into juries and uh, or pa panels of 12. And we gave our view of how a jury would operate came back and told the lawyers what our 
jury result was. And the facilitator came out again and talked. I went, wow, I really like that. I just didn't know what it was. What is that called? What that, what that person just did, what is that? So hard to research that. Um, what is it that the person did where I just <laughs> couldn't do that? Um, but my next door neighbor was a lawyer. So I knocked on his door and I said, Fred, I just went to this mock jury and the guy who facilitated it was really fascinating. He said, oh, that's a jury consultant. Huh. Jury consultant, okay, that's interesting. Um, what do they do? And he told me a little bit about what jury consultants do. It, it was actually what we went through. They test whether or not uh, a law firm should litigate or not litigate. He said, well, would you like to meet my jury consultant? I said, oh, that would be great. So he put me in touch with the company that he uses for jury consulting. And I set up an appointment. I asked uh, that person for 15 to 20 minutes of his time. And I said, um, you know, uh, uh, Fred gave me your name. I'd love to meet with you just to learn more about jury consulting. He said, sure, come on down. Uh, went to, um, uh, uh, I think it was, he was in Sausalito. And I went there and met him, had a wonderful time learning about jury consulting, gave me a tour of his offices. It was very nice. And I thanked him at the end of it. And I said, that, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. I learned a lot. Thank you. And I left. Before I even got to my car, I said, I hate that. I would never want to do that. It, it wasn't really facilitation. So much statistics, statistics. I said, this is not for me. So just to ask everybody here a, a rhetorical question, really, but do you think that that was productive time for me? OK, thank you, Jennifer, for showing your face. And I can see you <laughs> nodding your head. It, it really saved me from starting to look for job openings for a jury consulting consultant because I thought it was fascinating. But when I learned what it really is, I went, not for me. Uh-uh. And it saved me so much time in job search. It eliminated an entire path that I thought would be a good one and learned would not be a good one. So that's, again, the why of information learning. The reason I left this slide up that's one of the whys of informational interview. Now, now, the other is getting access to what's called the hidden job market. Right? Informational interviews give you exposure, a way to get yourself known in the hidden job market. Um, what's the hidden job market? Well, the second quote here, the, vi the visibility may put you straight onto a short list, even if a job isn't advertised. And this comes from a book, The Success Code. So I'll give you one, one more quick story um, from me. I, uh, I was still looking. Now I was working for, for the Lee Hecht Harrison outplacement firm. Uh, I started as a client there, and they hired me on to teach job search skills and, um, and do career advising. Um, and I didn't get enough hours. I was an hourly employee. I'm not getting enough hours. I could really use more hours. I wasn't full time. And I was at a meeting and uh, I, I knew the people at the meeting. And I, this woman said, how are things going? I said, well, I like what I'm doing, but I'm not getting enough hours. And I told her what I was doing. She said, you should talk to my husband. He's out in the lobby. Now, I happen to know her husband, which is always good to know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. So I went to see him and I said, Howard, your wife said I needed to talk to you. That's one way to really get into somebody is to say, your wife said I need to talk to you. <laughs> so now he said, what's up? And I told him my situation. And I said, I'm looking for more hours to do um, uh, job search training and career advising. He said, you have to talk to Abby Snay. She's the executive director of JVS. And when you get the appointment, in order to get the appointment, let her know that, um, that I sent you, use my name. I was on her hiring committee 25 years ago. Okay. So now I started calling JVS and I tried to get on her calendar. 
Um, I did get on her calendar, it took a few weeks, but I got on her calendar and I researched a lot about what is JVS. And I found out that it's similar to what I was doing. Lehat Tarasin is a for-profit organization. JVS is a non-profit organization. So now I had a whole bunch of questions and I put that together and I finally got to meet with, uh, with Abby. And again, I never saw any jobs that were open in this organization. I, it's a nonprofit, it's a fairly small nonprofit, but I had a wonderful discussion with them um, about what I was doing, uh, what JVS does, um, the difference between for profit and nonprofit. And as we had a wonderful discussion, I really appreciated it. And I said to myself, this is a great organization to work in. Um, we'll, we'll just see what happens. But I didn't ask for a job. I didn't ask about any jobs that were opening open and there was nothing posted on the job boards. I thanked her very much. I said, I hope that we can keep in touch in the future. She said, yes, definitely. Let's keep in touch. That was it. I left. Um, we, we talked for probably around 45 minutes, even though I only asked her for 15 to 20. Um, and she said, it's OK if we continue speaking. So we talked for about 45 and then I left. Two weeks later, I got a call from a stranger and they say, hi, uh, I'm with JVS. And our executive director said that I should talk to you. We're thinking of opening up a position for a trainer and wanted to know if you want to come in and talk about it. Now, when we talk about the hidden job market, that's what we're talking about. They had already been thinking about a position. They didn't put it out there yet. It wasn't posted anywhere. Therefore, the hidden part. I didn't meet with them. Uh, we talked for a while. Um, they then said, you know, we'd love you to come on here. I said, well, I'm already working part time at, at the uh, at the for profit organization. She said, well, we're only looking for someone part time right now. Uh, could you do that? And I said, that'd be great. And now I had two part time jobs, which did exactly what I needed. And eventually uh, they asked me to come on full time at JVS. And I've been with JVS for 13 years. How did I get that job? Well, you saw a job posting. No, there was no job posting. Well, it was a cousin. No, it wasn't a cousin. But I had a great conversation with the executive director who then talked to her staff and said, remember we were talking about a trainer in this? I think we have somebody for that. I didn't have to submit a resume and hope that somebody read the resume. After I talked to them, they asked me for a resume. And now that I knew what the job was all about, because we had that conversation, I knew what to put on my resume and made sure it was going to work. But they really had already thought of hiring me through the uh, informational interview. So that's what this is about. It's a, it's a way to find out, do I want this kind of job, not want this kind of job? Do I want to work for this company, not work for this company? It saves you so much time in some of the decisions we need to make when we're in job search, particularly when we're not exactly sure where we're looking to go it also creates allies or job openings opportunities so it does a whole bunch of things that we need to be really good at when we're in job search to in order to accelerate our job search and get to the goal faster um i have one more story but it's not mine so i'll just share it on the screen uh, Mimi was a, was a client of ours, and I know this is small print. I'll, I'll read through it very quickly, but th this is something I had asked her for. Can you tell me your experience with uh, informational interviewing and uh, you know how you were getting to look for your jobs? Um, and this is what, what she shared with us, and I shared it with incoming clients. Um, informational interviews were the most fun of her job search. People who respond really want to help. That's interesting. So when they say, sure, I'd love to talk with you, or it's okay to talk with you, or I think I can put up 15 minutes, it means that they want to help you right away. So you're not in a, in a, in, in a job interview, many times we think that that's adversarial. Well, here, definitely it's not adversarial because they have nothing to gain. They're just there to help. And then she wrote in initial reach out email, add any other people they might suggest I speak to. 
So not only did she say, I'd love to have some of your time, and if you know anyone else I should reach out to, can you let me know? So now already she's starting to expand the possibility of informational interviews, because this person might say, I'm not available, but talk to Joanne. Um, she continued with, uh, I include what I'm looking for in my email to set up the interview. Um, not looking for a job, I'm looking for this kind of information. During the interview, I make note of the time and remind them that time is coming up, which is something that we teach all the time. And I'll, I'll show you that in the logistics part of this program. But um, if, if they've given you 15 to 20 minutes of, of their time, you are in charge of this meeting, which means you have to look at your watch or timer or whatever it is. And when 15 minutes is up, you have to say, and they may still be talking. You may say, excuse me, I don't, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I want to be cognizant of your time. And thank you so much for giving me this time. You said 15 minutes, 15 minutes is up. Most of the time, they'll say, that's OK. I don't have something coming up right away. Let's continue. It's up to them to keep going. Uh, and then she continued with reach out to people ancillary to my role. Uh, she was looking for a graphic design in the sciences. So she talked to scientists, science writers, et cetera. Um, informational interviewing as networking. She networked with a musician friend. She's also a musician. Um, and that led to a possible opportunity with notes on what this company is looking for. And it, then it helps her to do her homework to prepare for an informational interview. And again, it was not a posted job. It was part of what we call the hidden job. So three stories showing you that um, it's real, it really happens, and it's something you really should consider. So we talked about the what it is, and we talked about the why it is. Before we get into the how it is, um, I'm going to stop sharing for a minute and open this up to any questions that you might have. Any, I, don't, I didn't tell you at the beginning to possibly put questions into chat, but if anybody has any questions about the, you know, what informational interviewing is or why to do it, I could take your questions right now before we get into the how to do it. Please feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question. Okay. No questions means I'm really good at what I do. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, OK, thank you. We'll continue. At the end of this, um, uh, we'll have more time for questions. And we probably are not going to, they may not go even all the way to 1130. But we'll definitely have plenty of time to ask some questions. OK, I'll share my screen again. Um, let me get to the next slide. We'll talk about the how, you know, because people say, okay, I got it, David. That looks like a good thing to do, um, but how do I do it? Okay, so the first thing is, what career field or fields are you thinking about? Right, because that's going to be, that's going to be really important. Um, I started thinking about jury consulting. So I tried to set something up with a jury consultant. Um, there are others that uh, think I, I'd like to work in UX design. Well, then find somebody who works in UX design and then talk to them. So you can research um, different career fields, looking for people you could talk to, looking for companies that are in your career path that you think might be good to then find somebody in that company to talk with. So there are different ways to do it, but you first want to figure out um, what might I want to be when I grow up. It's not just um, I'm going to talk to people just because I'm going to talk to people. That's great networking, not an informational interview. An informational interview is, is much more focused than just an, a networking setup. OK. When you come up with a company or an industry, you don't care what company the person is in, but they're in your field. Identify those people. It could be people you know. It could be people who are in different fields. 
So um, there might be somebody who is in a completely different field, but working in that company. It could be somebody who's in a completely different field, but you met them at a conference and you want to learn about what it is that they do. Uh, so there are different ways that you're going to talk to people. And that's why it, it matches so nicely with networking and research. So um, identify the people that you want to interview. And then you want to set up that initial contact. I have to say this, this might be sometimes the hardest part. So I'll actually include in the slide set a little script for what you could do to introduce yourself to somebody, to ask them for some of their time. Um, email is the best. Getting somebody on the phone is real hard for them to, to, to um, ponder whether or not they even want to give you their time. So they'll usually make a quick yes, no determination. So an email is better for them to look at it and think about it. Um, if you do reach someone by phone, always ask, is this a good time for us to talk? Don't assume they picked up the phone and they now have five minutes. They maybe picked up the phone because they thought you were the babysitter calling them, right? So always ask, is this a good time for, for, for us to talk? I really want to talk to you for just a few minutes. Um, I have to tell you how many people I actually say, okay. And then as soon as I realize it's a solicitation, I hang up or say, thank you, no, thank you. Um, but that's why, again, I, I do encourage people to do this by email. If you could find their email address, which is uh, just as hard or easy as getting their email, as getting their phone number. So phone number, email address, go for the email. Emphasize that you're not, that you're looking for information. You don't even have to say, I'm not looking for a job, because as soon as you say the word job, they hear job. This person wants help with a job. Forget it. Emphasize, I'm looking for information. I'm trying to learn more about jury consulting. Um, and the best thing is if you have someone in common, a mutual, a mutual connection where I could say, Fred mentioned to me that you are in jury consulting and I, I wanted to learn more about it. And he gave me your, your email. That's, a, again, a, a warm introduction. So it's always good if you if you could do that. But if not, you could still be there talking about, I found you are a jury consultant and I wanted to learn more about jury consulting. I wonder if I can get five minutes of your time, 15 to 20 minutes of your time. Um, ask for a convenient, convenient time to meet and ask for, the standard is to ask for 15 to 20 minutes. That's usually the kind of time that people can um, kind of separate out in their workday that they can, might be able to give you some of that time. If they say yes, your work's not done. You now have to prepare for the interview. How will you introduce yourself? Do you have your elevator pitch? Um, you know, we, we explain your, your name, what you do or what you've been doing or what you have done, um, maybe a little success story that you've done and, uh, and the fact that you're really excited to talk with them. That's part of the introduction. And then what questions will you ask them? So I'll, I'll share some of that with you also. But you wanna prepare for the interview. You do not wanna go into that interview cold saying, oh, I know what I'm thinking about, because when you walk in and you're talking to somebody, uh, whether it's on a Zoom call like this, or these days, more people are meeting face to face, um, you want to make sure that you are prepared, even if you have notes in front of you with the questions you want to ask, uh, that's fine. No one expects you to come and memorize a list of questions. No, no problem having a list of questions there in front of you, but you want to prepare for that interview with questions that you might want to have answers to. Then remember, you own the interview. You asked for it, you set it up, they agreed to be there, but now you own it. So you have to conduct the informational interview. You have to watch the clock, we talked about that. Um, and then, Always good at the end, we recommend that at the end, you, you thank them for their time and say, is there anybody else you think I should talk to to learn more about this? So now you're also expanding. And if they say, um, yeah, uh, 
Joe is a good person. She knows a lot about this. Uh, good time to say, oh, thank you very much. Can I use your name when I contact Joe? And now again, you have a warm introduction to Joe because you just made a oh, mini relationship with this person. So um, ask for others you might speak with and ask if you could use their name. Okay, last thing, just like a job interview, send a thank you. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate meeting with you, especially if you then got the referral to, to Joe, you might then say, and thank you so much for the introduction to Joe. I spoke with her and we're going to be meeting again next week. So now she, this person who you just spoke to, he or she, um, knows that they actually helped and it makes them feel good and they'll want to do more of these informational interviews. But show your appreciation and, and show that what, what information they gave you was helpful. Okay, so this is the how. These are some of the things that are really important. These are the six steps. These come from UC Berkeley's Career Center. So this is what UC Berkeley is teaching their graduate students as they graduate, right? So they're, they're, they're graduating with a master's. They're going to be out there looking for work. Same thing that I'm telling you here is what they're talking to people who graduate with masters, even with PhDs, how to deal with informational interviews. I promised you a little bit of a script. So I can't write a script for you unless we meet one on one. Um, so here are some things that are be important to put into uh, into a script. Hello, my name is. Don't say my name is and put a blank. My name is David Roth. OK. Um, and then I, I, I put in, in italics there. Give a little background about yourself. This might be relevant. Um, hi, my, my name is David Robbins. I, I work as a a job search coach uh, for a nonprofit. And I'm, I'm really interested in learning more about uh, corporate training and, uh, and the work that, um, that it seems that you might be doing. So I'd love to talk with you about that. Like that's, that's the introduction. Um, I was given your name by. Try to make it a warm introduction by finding somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. Now, this is the wonder of LinkedIn. And I, I also teach some LinkedIn classes here at the library. But the, the wonder of LinkedIn is when I'm looking for somebody to talk to for the informational interview, many times it's a second degree connection, which means that we have a mutual connection. My first degree is their first degree. So I can always talk to that person, get the referral to the second degree, and then put that person's name in the email. I was given your name by Bill, who we're both connected to in LinkedIn. Um, I was referred to you by Samantha, or Joe suggested I contact you. Any of those work. Don't put all three of those. Okay, that's what I'm saying. We're giving you scripting, but these are different ideas of how you can put together a script. And you notice it, it, it's, it's, not, it's not really formal. It just needs to include things that are important. Um, I'm looking for information about this, or I'm looking for ideas about that. I'm seeking advice on. So uh, I'm looking for information about your company. I'm looking for uh, ideas about breaking into such and such a field. Uh, I'm seeking advice on um, classes I might take to make myself a better candidate for this field. There are all different things that you could be looking for. And that's where you're going to do your own research and figure out exactly what it is I'm trying to do here. How is it going to help me with my job search? These are different ways you're going to look at that question. And then in that, what I consider to be an email, um, I'd like to set up a time for us to get together or talk over the phone. Uh, 15 to 20 minutes is usually standard. And I'd like to ask you some questions about your company and the, the, the value system that comes to play, um, the growth potential in your company, whatever it is. Don't ask all the questions right there, but just talk about what, what kind of um, information are you looking for at an informational interview? 
Um, and then would this day, this time work for you? Can you suggest another time it's convenient? And then end with thanks very much. I look forward to hearing from you uh, to set up an appointment. All right. So if it's an email, they're not going to say yes right away. You're going to end with, I'm looking forward to hearing from you in response to this email. So I'm looking to hearing from you uh, within the next couple of weeks. You get a little bit of pressure there, but I think it's still very fair to put that on them. Okay. So there's a, a little more of the how to scripting. It could be really brief. So I have a couple of examples here just to show you how, how brief it could actually be. Hi, Chris. I hope this finds you well. I'm Rachel, a digital marketer looking to transition to a marketing operations role. Um, I read your day in the life of marketing post on Demand Spring. I was inspired to reach out to you. Uh, would you be open to sharing your experiences or tips on landing a marketing ops role? Best, Rachel. That simple. That's when Chris may come back and say, as the response here, hi, Rachel, thanks for reaching out. I'm so happy to know that post is being read. You notice the, the, the comment here, I read your day in the life, whoops, sorry. I read your day in the life of marketing post. So you're giving a compliment there and Chris is going coming back with, um, I'm so happy to know that post is being read. I'd be happy to chat. Let me know what a good time for you is and we'll take it from there. Happy Memorial Day, Chris. It's, it's the same way you would invite someone to coffee, right? You just want to be kind of specific in, I want to learn more about something. I want to, uh, uh, would you be open to sharing your experiences or tips on landing a marketing role? I'm not asking, do you have any marketing roles open in your company? Different question. That's the one that they're going to run away from. But say, I want to learn more about how to get into what you do. Very nice way to ask for advice. Again, most people are very happy to give advice. Makes them feel good. Makes them feel experienced. I want to be frank, though. Not everybody's going to respond to this. That doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just means that there are other people who are too busy or just don't like to talk to other people or for whatever reason. So go to the next person. And the next person. Uh, hi, Sarah. I hope this finds you well. I'm Max, a marketer for certified, a marketer and certified Salesforce admin transitioning to a business analyst role. I'd love to learn about your experiences as a business analyst at Dolby. Would you be open to meeting for coffee or jumping on a short 15 minute call next week? Best, Max. That simple. Response <clears throat> Hi, Max. Thanks for connecting. Happy for you to be transitioning to a business analyst role. We can meet next week for coffee or, or lunch to discuss in my experiences and answer any questions you may have. Are you in the city next week? I'm going to just guess because I also um, am, am a cynic at heart. I'm, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. So originally from Brooklyn, I, right away, we're sarcastic and cynical. So, so I know that there are people here in the room that are saying, well, these are all made up. But actually, the second one is not made up. This is what a client who graduated in our business analyst training program found someone to talk to. And, and this is the response they got. So if this is real, uh, yes, we make up a lot of things, but just showing you that this can really happen. Okay, so more on the how. This comes from the Harvard Business Review. And again, this is what Harvard is also sharing with their students. Prepare and practice. So if you have your list of questions, Ask them of a friend. Ask just ask them out loud. Ask them on on a personal Zoom call. You can always get your own Zoom account free, and record yourself, and then watch back uh, to see how you sounded, or order your tape it off your phone. Keep your introduction short. You you're not there to talk about yourself until they start asking you questions about yourself. So don't start. I can I can go through 
30 minutes of my experience as an introduction, I've only asked for 15 minutes of their time. So that's kind of silly, right? So I want to just take a minute or less than a minute saying who I am and why I'm there. Set the tone. Smile, warm, friendly. Think like a journalist. I always wondered what that was. And I started thinking about what does a journalist do? They probe. When they get an answer, they say, so why is that? What did you like about that? So if the person says, I, I really enjoy working as the data analyst. Can you tell me more about what you like about working as a data analyst? Well, you know, putting together information statistically, be able to share it out. Um, can you tell me more about the sharing out? That, that's like a journalist. You're now asking questions on questions. You're not insulting them. You're just inquiring. And deliberately test your hypotheses, right? I thought that the jury consulting was a great thing to do as a facilitator. I'm going to talk to lawyers. I'm going to bring them in. I'm going to be in front of a group. That I tested that out and found out, no, that's not where most of the work is. That's 5% of the work. 95% of the work was gathering statistics and doing research on cases. Not for me. So deliberately test those hypotheses. Follow up with gratitude, not demands. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, play the long game. Build a relationship. Would it be okay if we connected on LinkedIn? Um, uh, I think I'm from our conversation. I think I found an article that that you might be interested in. Can I send that to you? You could try to do something where you create that allyship. It could be really helpful. Uh, I, I saw a question in the chat I'll take right away, and that is, what's an appropriate subject or title to use for messages if you're using email to reach out, right? And it might be um, looking for information, um, uh, asking for advice on data analysis jobs or data analysis um, roles, right? I always, I always try to avoid the word jobs anywhere in informational interviews. Um, but yeah, your, your subject matter could be, or it could be um, uh, referred by. That could be the subject, right? Re referred by Nina Lee. Um, and then they're gonna wanna know, oh, what was the referral? And then they would open up the email. But you're right, the subject uh, line on an email is gonna be something you want them to want to open it up. I hope that helped. You know. Okay, more tips from the Harvard Business Review. And these are the do's and don'ts. Um, principles to remember. Do your homework. Do your background research. If you're asking them about questions, if you're asking them questions about their company, and it's information that is on the very first page of the company website, right away they know that you're not invested. You have to show you're invested. They're giving you their time, free, important stuff, possible uh, networking connection. You have to show that you did your due diligence. So do your homework, um, do your research. Uh, Prepare a succinct explanation of your background and what you're looking for. Succinct is the important word here. Succinct, concise, is coming from Harvard Business Review. And then make sure that you send a thank you note at the end. I, 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 there's always a thing, same thing with uh, after a job interview, people ask, you know, should I send a card? I mean, a Hallmark card would be beautiful. Yeah, but it doesn't get to somebody right away, and particularly people who work from home, they may never see that for a month. So email uh, thank yous are ex totally acceptable. What about the don'ts? Can't emphasize this enough. Don't go in cold. Don't think that I know what I'm looking for and I'm ready to go. Write it down. 
Practice answer, asking questions. Practice introducing yourself. Time yourself on your introduction. Um, don't ask for favors. Could you speak to the hiring manager for me? No, don't do that. Ask for advice. Uh, could you give me some advice on what I would need to prepare if I were able to uh, get uh, invited to an interview? Oh, yes. What you should have is this, 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 and this. Uh, I know who, who the hiring manager might be, even though I haven't applied yet. I know hiring managers here are always looking for this, this, this. You ask for advice. Don't ask them for a favor. At this point, you're not friends yet. And don't let one negative informational interview sour you on the process. I gave you my two experiences. One where I learned what not to do, what, what, what job to not pursue. And the other where I got the job at JVS. Um, I think that, you know, I, I just know it's real. Um, when, when I talked about this at a company meeting, uh, there were at least three other people at JVS that said that they got their jobs through informational interviews. So uh, it's absolutely real. Uh, at JVS, we used to have a quarterly panel discussion. Um, and the executive director, Abby Snay, who I mentioned, she's the real person. Um, uh, now she works actually for um, for the governor's office uh, in workforce development. Uh, but uh, she would invite people from different industries and talk to them about why they give informational interviews and what their expectation is if someone's asking for an informational interview. And we would fill the room with 60 people uh, who then also had questions. And what about this? And why would they do this? And, and, and they explained what they would do. And, and one really stood out to me, uh, a gentleman, I, I, don't, I don't remember which company he was from or what his role was, but he said he is always interested in giving someone an informational interview. Um, but they're always going to be between 8 and 8.30 in the morning. And Abby said, why is that the best time for you? She said, yeah, that's my commute time. When I have to drive into the office, it usually takes me about 45 minutes so I can do an informational interview from the car and we could have a great conversation. So it's, just, it's a phone interview, um, but that's his time and he's giving you his commute time. That's good for him, good for you, everybody's happy. Um, so the thing is he, I mean, he could have been listening to a book on tape. He could have been listening to uh, the radio. He could have been listening to good music. He's going to listen to you because you asked and you asked nicely, you asked the right way. So um, that, that's why I know that these things um, actually work. So here are the principles of what to do and what to not do. Um, I don't have a lot more, but I have two really important slides uh, to help. So you saw a slide earlier that said, you know, here's a script. How do you how do you reach out to somebody? But then what do you do when you're there? How do you manage this? So here are the logistics of your informational interview. Um, particularly since many informational, many interviews now are going to be face-to-face. -face. Uh, a lot of them are still on, uh, on a virtual environment like this. But more and more we're seeing, we work with recruiters all the time and with hiring managers. And we know that people are, in fact, asking people to come into the office. Sometimes in a job interview, the first interview might be virtual. The second, third interview might be face-to-face. -face. In, a, in, a, in an informational interview, it's up to the other person. They may say, let's meet in, um, uh, in Google Meet or you know, Microsoft Meet. Uh, they might say, let's meet in Zoom. So you have that, but you also, they might say, yeah, why don't you come into the office? Okay. If you're going into the office or you're going to meet somewhere, you need to know where you're meeting and how long it will take to get there. That's the part of logistics. 
Now, I went through five years as a road warrior. I used to teach classes in different cities all over the United States and Canada. And when I knew I was going into a city that I hadn't been to before, um, I would always fly in the night before, check into my hotel, and then I would take my car and drive from the hotel to where I thought I was going to be teaching to find out how long will it take me to get there? Do I have the right directions? Right, so I would do all that so I wouldn't show up late to teaching. And then I would also go to the front desk and say, okay, I found out that I could drive from here to that office in 20 minutes, but I'm gonna be leaving in the morning. How long is it gonna take? And they would say, oh, it'll take you at least 35 or 40 minutes. Okay, but now I knew how to get there. So you need to have clear directions. How long will it take to get there? Are they near a BART station? Are they near Muni? Are they near AC Transit? All those things you need to know. Do you have a backup plan for transportation in case the bus is late, the ferry's late, your ride falls through, your car breaks down? What's the backup plan for transportation? Or what's the emergency contact number you have for that person? Right. So you might actually be able to send them a quick email using your phone get something in, in, in place for them. Um, they may actually share their phone number. You might have that. Have you arranged for reliable childcare? It might be a Zoom meeting, but um, it's different when you have um, your, your toddler on your lap or your dog barking right next to you. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're clearing the path, just like a job interview, to have the least amount of distraction. Um, if you're going to a meeting, what will you bring with you? Pens, paper for note taking. I bolded the words note taking because it's really important for you to take notes. If you're stand, sitting in front of somebody, take notes. Keep making eye contact, but write things down and look up and write things down, whether it's a Zoom meeting or whether it's face to face. They're giving you information or advice, write it down. They're gonna give you the name of somebody who you should talk to. And then you could then say, oh, do you have their contact information? Write it down. So make sure you have note paper with you in order to make this thing work, not just be a one-time thing. Um, and in part of the logistics is, do you know whom you will be meeting? Um, who are they? Now that you've researched the company or the field and you found somebody, know more about them. Check them out on, on LinkedIn. Check them out, do a Google search on them. Find out more about who they are so that you have um, a way to talk about things that might be even more personal. And make sure that you have something to keep time. So very important that you run the meeting. So you need to have a watch, um, your put put your uh, you know phone down in front of you so that you can put a timer on for 15 minutes or 20 minutes and you can let them know time's up um, unless you want to go go on. That's logistics. That's one thing that's also really important. You're going to be talking to another human being. So what's important when you're talking to another human being? Um, yeah, the information, your preparation. But the other thing that's really important is your attitude. That, that's going to give them the impression of whether you're serious, whether you're warm and friendly, whether um, you're going to do something with this information that they're sharing, whether they're wasting their time or not wasting their time. A lot of that is from attitude. So are you walking tall? Try to make a great impression. You, you just met this person for the first time. Make sure you're getting that first impression view. Um, have you practiced your smile? <laughs> I know it sounds silly. Um, um, I, I smile a lot. I, I don't necessarily have to, have to practice a lot. But um, sometimes we do need to practice a little bit because we're, we're so much in thought, right? We're thinking, what is the next question I'm going to ask? What's the... And we start looking like this, right? We're serious, right? The, the forehead lines are there, right? We're 
but being real serious. Well, be, be, be more open. Look, eyes are open, not down. Don't scrunch up. So that's the practice of smiling. It, it, it's real. It's, even if it sounds silly, it's real. Um, is your body language positive and alert? Now, I have to tell you, if there's anybody in this room who thinks they might be my age, which is old person, OK? We especially have to have body language that is positive and alert. Because one of the stereotypes of working with older people, people 50 plus, basically, is that they're, um, they're not really with it. They're not up to date. Well, be up to date, OK? Stand firm, even if you're sitting, like I am, um, but not like this, right? Like this. So you want to have your body language positive and alert so that you're really starting to make a connection with this person. If you're meeting face to face, do you have a firm handshake? It's not this kind of thing. It's this kind of thing. OK, don't squeeze their hand. Don't show that you're stronger than them. That's not what you're trying to do. But seriously, you want to get a, you want to get a good grip. Um, are you friendly, positive and enthusiastic? Enthusiasm is really important. I'm really excited about talking with you, Bill. Um, I, I thank you so much for your time. This is really important to me. I really wanted to learn this and, and looking about your information. And I saw that you worked also with this company and this company when I looked at your, uh, your LinkedIn profile. Um, I think you have exactly what I'm looking for to get more information. So I really appreciate it. Now they're excited about sharing information from you. So that's all part of attitude. Can you make eye contact? Demonstrate you're honest and trustworthy. Um, everybody here is honest and trustworthy, but you also have to show it. And a lot of that, again, is, is an attitude. Um, finally, you know, now we said, sit up, make eye contact. <laughs> no, everybody's real stiff. No, the idea is, okay, you got that? You got what you're supposed to be doing? Take a deep breath. I, I used to be a yoga instructor. It's not <laughs> We were part of my eclectic background. I had a yoga school in San Francisco way back in the 70s. Um, make sure that before you walk into the meeting with them, you take that deep breath and you let it out and relax your shoulders. And you can still have um, a, a really positive and alert attitude, but still be relaxed inside. It's normal to be nervous. But try to see this as a learning experience. And I have to tell you, when people say, how do I get over the nerves? I always tell them, you won't. Um, I, I've worked with theater professionals also back in my history and you know, talk to people about, um, you're so comfortable getting out there on the stage. And they go, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> um, I, am, I am shaking before I walk out on the stage. But I take that nervous energy and turn it into enthusiasm. I take that nervous energy and use it. So it's the same thing. You're going to be working with somebody. You're nervous. I'm going to give you a secret. They're nervous also. They don't know who you are. So they, they're not sitting there going, oh, yeah, whatever you want. I'm the expert. They're nervous. They don't know what questions you're going to be asking them. They're hoping to do a good job for you and for them. So yes, you're going to be nervous. That's OK. Try to see this as a learning experience, and that's where the deep breath, relaxing the shoulders can really help center you and get you ready to, um, to do a good job with this. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop here. I have uh, two more slides, I think. But um, I want to see if there are any other questions about informational interviewing. Because my next slide really is not more content, but I'm going to give you some uh, resource material, uh, thing, what, what I use to put together my presentations. Um, and I'm going to give you a couple of, uh, of uh, links to articles that could be helpful to you. So once again, if you have any questions, uh, I'm available. And we don't see any questions. Oh, oh sorry. 
Jennifer. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Robbins. Um, so it sounds like you're saying, obviously it's what you know, but it, the most important thing is who you know or who you know know or who you know 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 down the road, just to get the information, just to put yourself out there. And and if if it doesn't go well, let, let's we hope it goes well. But if you if it's not the most successful thing you've ever done in your life, that's okay. You learn and keep doing it. Absolutely. You're absolutely right on, Jennifer. And, and the idea is, uh, except for the poem you said, it's not what you know. It, it's, it is who you know, and, and who you know who may know somebody who may know somebody who may know somebody, absolutely true. But the idea is that what you know, that's what you're asking them for. So when you're done, you now know a little more. And that's really going to help accelerate your job search. Because now you know, like I learned, um, jury consulting, don't waste my time. Um, I'm also going to learn, uh, oh, JVS, oh, nonprofit is different than for profit. This was something really interesting to me. I will look into other things. So I might then look into Rubicon and some other nonprofit um, workforce development organizations. But that was the what I learned from that informational interview. So you need to know, what is it that I want to know? And then who do I know that I might want to talk to? Yeah, so put those two things together. But thank you for that, Jennifer. Absolutely. Who else is out there asking questions? David, I just want to let you know, I got a DM from Barbara. Uh, she has to go, but she wanted to thank you for the presentation. Oh. Pleasure, absolute pleasure. So let me let me finish it up in case other people have to leave. I'm gonna share my screen again. Okay, we talked about attitude. So let's let's finish this up with some uh, resource material for you. Um, this is from uh, UC Berkeley's Career Center on informational interviewing. Some of this is where I got the material, but this will get you a little deeper into where my slides came from. Um, and then how to get the most out of an informational interview. Um, and this is from the Harvard Business Review. Uh, you can see the data on it's actually 2016, but I have to tell you 2016 to 2023, um, pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, it's the same thing. The only thing that would have been different is in the pandemic, we wouldn't have talked about shaking hands with anybody. <laughs> so that wouldn't have talked about, but pre-pandemic and now we're, we're kind of post-pandemic. Um, and, and again, after you shake hands with them, when you leave, uh, take out some, um, uh, you know, wipe, wipe your hands off real good. Um, so I just want to, I want to point out that there, there's more information and I want to give you that, but here's the thing that really makes job search successful for you. You, you can sit through this presentation. You can come to the LinkedIn presentations I'm going to do. We'll do presentations for, for people who are 50 plus who are in job search. We can do all these presentations. They don't mean anything unless you do something about it. So adults don't learn by watching or listening. Uh, I know people say, well, oh, yeah, I learned a lot. I watched the YouTube channel. You actually don't learn until you do it. And you say, oh, I didn't do that well. <laughs> what could I do better? You may have to go back to the YouTube channel and watch it again. The point is, you now have to create a to-do list for yourself, right? What are you going to do? Are you going to research career paths? Do you already know your career path? Well, I need to look at companies that are in my career path. And if I find a company, I then can look for people in that company I might be able to talk with. And you say, well, I don't know anybody. Well, you take a look again at some of the slides. You don't need to know them as long as you could send them an email or send them a, a, a LinkedIn link, a LinkedIn message. Right. So there are different ways you could do it, but you have to do some of that research. You have to do some of the steps that we, we talked about earlier in the presentation, but you have to create your own to do list. 
Um, talking to people you know who know you is a great way to start. If any of you are going to networking events and you happen to bump into somebody and everybody's wearing their little name tag, right? And you see a company name that that's interesting. Gee, what is ABC Company? And they tell you and you go, um, does your company hire any um, uh, Unix developers? Um, yeah, we've been using Unix um, when we work with Hewlett Packard. Oh, um, do you think that we could set something up where I could just talk to you a little more about your company? That wasn't hard. No blood, no broken bones. It's, it's easy. I'm, I'm kidding. It's not easy. But it's what you need to do to move forward. But you need to come up with your own to-do list. Whether it's, I already know the companies, now I got to look for the people. Or, gee, I have some idea. Here are five people I'm thinking about. Send, draft an email. Don't even send an email. Just say, you know, let me see what it would look like. Okay? Baby steps. But if you don't put something on the to-do list, then this was just nice meeting you. I appreciate you coming. It was great. You have to do it. So adults learn by doing, taking a little bit of a risk, and then reflecting on what they did. Did it work? Did it not work? How can I do it better next time? That's what adult learning is about. And I'm assuming that people in the room are adults. I'm going to encourage you to take some action after this presentation. You'll get the slide set. You can review it again. You get the articles that are there. You'll find more articles that are referenced in those articles. Um, informational interviewing, it's interesting. These are the seven essentials of job search that we cover in uh, uh, JVS. You notice informational interviewing isn't here. And that's because it is part of research and it's part of networking. And, but it's also some of the skills of job interviewing and it's some of the skills of putting together your marketing material. So that's why I consider it the gold standard. It's a little bit of a number of different things, uh, all of it to be there to be helpful to accelerate your job search. I'm gonna stop sharing. I think I do have a contact slide that's gonna come with your slide set. Let me share this out just so you know what you're going to be looking for. So if you need to reach out, um, my work email address is drobbins at jvs.org. If you want to find me on LinkedIn, it's linkedin.com slash in slash dgrobbins. And um, again, I hope this was helpful, and I hope you put together a, a, a to-do list. And um, I will uh, keep this open for any questions that you might have, but otherwise I'll, I'll turn this over to um, Lori and Angela and say thank you all for coming and I hope this was helpful. Does any of you have any questions for David? I see a thank you from Nina for the presentation. If we don't have any question, uh, uh, take, oh, we have a question from uh, Yarrett. Uh, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, hello, Mr. David. Uh, thank you very much for the very good presentation. That's very helpful, uh, good content. Uh, I just have one quick question. Uh, just like you, uh, just like your experience, I've worked in a corporate uh, for organizations for about six years. Most of them were hospitals, hospitals, standard hospitals, uh, like UCSF, Alameda Health System. And then let, later, finally, I had the opportunity to work in a private health, uh, health insurance organization. Uh, and the way they uh, did it is very different from the hospitals. They're more into business. They're not, they're not too concerned about the rules, regulations, uh, more focused on making money. 
uh, I also went to school and graduated with health science from a university. The, and putting all the things together, your presentation and my experience through informational interviews, how do, since I saw both sides of the reality, how do I uh, go from where I am to my future uh, position uh, using informational interview? I relate very much to the jury consultant example, uh, but just to summarize, uh, how, how can I summarize, put together everything with this presentation and move one step well, forward? I think you are that you you have to make a determination of which of those different experiences that you've had that you'd like to research going forward, right? If you think that you know I really like the hospital better than the private organization, um, then what you should be doing is possibly um, talking to people inside hospitals or medical centers um, to to find out you know. What what's happening these days? Um, healthcare has changed over the years uh, pretty drastically. If you look now, there are a lot of street corner clinics that that are part of Sutter Health, street corner clinics that are part of even Kaiser. So um, you know maybe there's an opportunity to work in in something like that. So the idea is to talk to somebody in the organization to find out what's new in healthcare. You know, I used to work in hospital environment years ago, but I'd I'd love to find out you know, what you think is new and what is it that I would need to do a little more research and um, to, to see if this is really good for me. And let that person tell you more about what they're, what they think is happening in the field. Um, there's still nothing wrong with going to the, to the private organization, as I said, even though they don't follow the rules, uh, you know, and talk to them about what's, what opportunities are there. And that might be like the jury consulting, you might realize, I really don't want to be there anymore. I, I, that's not what I want. I want to go into this other thing. And maybe there's something in the middle that you haven't heard about that you'll find out about when you have an informational interview. Somebody who's in the field currently might be able to give you some other things to think about and other opportunities that are there. And that becomes the, the hidden job market. Um, you know, Positions that you never even considered because you didn't know that they existed you might find that out in these discussions. So I don't know if that's exactly helpful, but from what you said, I think that's the way to move forward. It's just the idea of getting to talk to people in the field you're looking at or in a particular healthcare organization that you're interested in and then try to decide what do I want to find out from them and come up with that question set. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You know, and, and for everybody, sometimes this is not an easy thing to do alone. We always recommend that you have an accountability buddy, that you have a support person who's also in job search, possibly, or somebody who's no longer in job search, but somebody who can bounce ideas off of. So like in your situation, you might say, oh, I, I'm, I want to talk to, you know, to Sutter Health. I have these questions. Show those questions to somebody and say, what do you think of these questions if I'm trying to find out A, B, and C? And they might say, hmm, that second question, uh, that's a little abrupt and forward. Why don't you think of saying it this way or that way? So it's always good to work with somebody else or work with a job coach. And the library has incredible job coaches who could also help you formulate what you're looking for in, um, in a, an informational interview. Okay. Thank you for the question. If there are no more, I'll turn it back over to Lori. Thank you so much, David. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to share with us how to be successful in informational interviewing conversations. And I also want to thank everyone for joining the program. I hope you find the presentation informative and helpful to you. We will send out an evaluation survey together with David's slide deck and a link to the recording later today. Please give us your feedback so we can continue to improve. Again, thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye now.